know this morning every praise is to our God. I'm going to give God a shout of praise on this morning. Thank you, praise and worship singers. Amen. Y'all blessed us this morning. Gave praise to our God and let us know where it's to, it's to go to. Go to our God and not to ourselves. Amen. <laughs> To God be the glory, God be the praises. Yes, Let me test the waters this morning. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. God is blessing when? Right now. Did he wake you up this morning? Up to Start the you on your way. On the way. Food on your table. On the table. Clothes on your back. On back. Shelter of your head. Over the head. Kept you in right mind. Yeah. Come on, give God some praises. Hallelujah. One more time, we're in the house of the Lord to, to worship. We thank God about that. We take that not for granted. On this morning, I, I am going to need you to pull out a pen and a pencil because I have some important dates in this message and, and I have some important scriptures that you would want to, to know that you should know and every Christian ought to know. And, and this very much deals with the future as well as some monumental things that took place in the past. And you pray my strength in the Lord that we'll be able to deliver this message to you and it will be a blessing. And this chapter is very different from the other chapters. That's why you need to really key in on this chapter. Before all the good stuff happened, this stuff got to happen. Amen. Zechariah chapter 11 and verse number 7. And thank you, praise singers, and thank you, Dr. Jackson. Amen. Zechariah chapter 11, verse number 7 says, So I pastured the flock marked for slaughter, particularly the oppressed of the flock. Then I took two staffs and called one favor. Somebody said favor. You're right on, Jeff. I need, I need somebody to shout favor. And the other unions. Somebody said union. And I pastored the flock. Somebody said pastored the flock. Amen. Now if we can bow for a word of prayer. Come now, Holy Spirit, and feed your sheep. Come now, Holy Spirit, and hear the prayers of your sheep. Come, Holy Spirit, and through the powerful name of Jesus, bless your sheep, Lord, and help them in whatever area they need help in, Lord. Then feed them, Lord. Feed them, Lord. Feed the flock of God, the word of God. Strengthen their faith, Lord God. Heal the sick, Lord. Comfort the bereaved, Lord God. And the individual particular prayers that they need answered to, Father, we pray you will answer them. If you say no, that's an answer. Whatever answer you want to give them, Lord, give to them and have mercy upon them. Bless their lives. And then give them a blessed week, Lord. And let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. We say, Amen. Come on, give God a hand of praise. Amen. <laughs> give it on to God who sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary for all of our sins. Yes. He, hung. he hung. He bled. He, bled. he, died. he died. But on the third day, third day, he got up from the grave. I want to use as a subject title on this morning, The True Shepherd and the False Shepherd. All right. <laughs> Tell, tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. The, true the true shepherd and the false shepherd. Yes, Amen. We're going to talk about the darkest hour in Israel's 
history. I'm gonna say that again. We're gonna talk about the darkest hour in Israel's history. Yeah. All right. The judgment yes. referred to in this passage is gonna take place because of their rejection of the true shepherd. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When the Romans are gonna come in and they're gonna destroy the temple. Yes. They're gonna destroy the land. Mm -hmm. They're gonna destroy the people. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna do this in AD 70. Let somebody shout AD 70. AD 70. Why don't you do it again just a little bit louder? AD 70. Write that down. And the reason why the Romans are going to come in and destroy them is because they rejected Jesus Christ as their king. Can y'all hear me this morning? We have the most graphic picture in verses 1 to 3 of Zechariah chapter 11. The judgment that came on the land in AD 70. Mm -hmm. The great force of Lebanon was visited by fire from God. When Zechariah speaks of Lebanon and Bashan and Jordan, and that is his way of saying the entire land of Israel was under judgment. Then he goes on to say there will be wailing about the judgment on the land. Yes. The shepherds, the shepherds too will mourn because their pasture land will be destroyed and their flocks will suffer as a result of it. Can y'all hear me this morning? Yes, sir. On this morning, we're going to take a look at the true shepherd and the false shepherd. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, 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 or neighbor, or neighbor. The, true shepherd, the true shepherd, and the false shepherd. And the false shepherd. And just for a little recap of where we've been, Zechariah's prophecy is a message of hope. Mm -hmm. His message looked down through centuries and sees a message of gladness and, and deliverance which will be brought to Israel in the future by Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, when we looked at chapters 9 and, and 10, they both had joyous themes and, and they were very happy chapters. But then comes chapter 11. <laughs> How many know 11 follows 10? Amen. <laughs> but then, when we get to chapter 11, the prophet of hope is also a prophet, prophet of truth and reality. Sometimes folks only want to hear the good, but they don't want to hear the bad. Yeah, that's right. And sometimes folks don't want to hear the truth. That's right. They'd rather believe a lie. But Zechariah sees a time in the future when, when Israel will depart from the faith, depart from the truth. And this has a, has a, has a terminology. When you depart from the faith, that's called apostasy. And you'll see that in your reading. A-P-O-S-T-A-S-Y. A-P-O-S-T-A-S-Y. And all that means is depart from the faith. Yes, they're going to get to a point, Zechariah says, that, that they're going to reject the good shepherd. How many of you know this morning who the good shepherd is? How many know it's Jesus Christ? That's it. And sadly, Israel will reject the good shepherd and accept the false shepherd. 
And we're going to discover that this false shepherd has some other names in the Bible. They call him the worthless shepherd and, and the foolish shepherd. Yes, Can I go there this morning? Yes. He makes clear that Israel's sorrows and woes comes because of their rejection of the good shepherd. Yes, sir. Their rejection of Jesus Christ. They rejected him when he came the first time. Somebody said first time. First time. Because they rejected him, then they're going to accept the false shepherd. Yeah. And will suffer greatly because of it. And, and all this is going to take place before the second coming of Jesus Christ. How many of you know this morning that Christ is coming back again? He is coming back. Oh my goodness. I'm going to ask one more time. How many of y'all know he's coming back? I'm in better company. Amen. <laughs> Y'all scared me a minute. <laughs> Zechariah chapter 11 and verses 1 and 2, as we go there, the, the Bible says, open your doors. Somebody say, open your doors. Open your doors, O Lebanon, so that fire may devour your cedars. Wail, O pine tree, for the cedar has fallen. The stately trees are ruined. Well, oaks of Bashan, the dense forest has been cut down. Somebody said cut down. Cut down. Oh, you can feel the severity of the judgment on the land. God is going to reveal what caused the severity of the judgment. In Hebrew, oftentimes they tell you the effect before they tell you the cause. Yes. Can I go there this morning? Yes. Mount Lebanon is on the borders of Syria and Palestine. Over 14,000 feet high, the, the mountain is being addressed as if it, it is a person. It is so doomed that it is told to throw open its doors, to, to give access to the destructive fires that will ravish the trees without anyone able to stop it. How many know this morning when God judges, nobody can stop it? That's right. Oh, the finest and choicest trees. The cedars will not be spared from these vicious fires of judgment from God. And even the, the lowly fir trees will experience the same judgment. There is a sense of that nobody escapes judgment. How many know that if God determines to judge you that you can't escape? How many know you can run but you can't hide? Can I go there this morning? God says they are to wail because the glorious trees have been destroyed. Bashan in the northern part of the country it was known for its splendid forests of oaks and green luscious pastures and its abundance of cattle. The oak and the fir trees are commanded to wail, to lament, to howl, to cry out as the fires sweep through the land that are sent from God. Uh, if Lebanon with its high elevation and steeply dense slope forest was able to be reached by the raging fires from God, how much more so will the oaks in the lowlands of Bashan also be reached by the fire of God? Tell three neighbors, nobody will be able to escape. Can I go there this morning? God has given us some wisdom this morning. I don't let it pass you by this morning. It says, listen to the wail of the shepherds. Their rich 
pastors are scorched. Their rich pastors are devoured. Their rich pastors are, are destroyed by spreading flames. And, and the shepherds howl like an animal, yelling in distress. What is Zechariah talking about? Zechariah is talking about when the Romans come in in the future, they're going to destroy all the land of Israel. Somebody say in A.D. 70. AD 70. Come on, tell three neighbors A.D. 70. AD 70. When you leave out of here, you're going to have that, mind, that, that date on your brain. Can I go over this morning? Uh, the devastation descends all the way from the top to the bottom, all the way from the top, all the way down to the lower Jordan Valley. Can I go there this morning? Uh, the Bible says in Zechariah chapter 11 and verse number 3, the, the Bible says, listen to the wail of the shepherds. Their rich pastors are what? are destroyed. Listen to the roar of the lions. The lush thickets of the Jordan is what? Ruined. Is ruined. The jungle-like growth that adorned the narrow Jordan Valley in its central and lower section south of the Sea of Galilee was full of widows, willows, green grasses, and cane. This was the favorite hangout of the lions. The lions roared because their stumping ground was destroyed. And because their stumping ground was destroyed, their food was destroyed. They roared at their pitiful condition. Can I go there this morning? The wail of the shepherds and the roar of the lions lets us know today how severe the judgment of God was and the destruction was, that sorrow was everywhere. Can I back it up this morning? Can I go there this morning? Zechariah chapter 11 and verse number 4, the Bible says this is what the Lord my God says. Pastor, the flock marked for what? Pastor, the flock marked for slaughter. Y'all got it, y'all got it. The Messiah, the Messiah is given the task of feeding the flock of slaughtered folks. Can I go there? Yeah. He was to act as a shepherd to a flock marked for slaughter. Psalms 44 and 22 says, yet for your sake we face death all day long. We're considered as sheep for the slaughter. Uh, they were doomed to be slaughtered. Why? Because they rejected Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. Can I go there this morning? The Jewish historian named Josephus said about a million and a half Jews perished in their battle with Rome that made this scripture come true. How many know this morning that the word of God is true? How many know the word of God will come to pass? Can I go there this morning? Zechariah is commanded to act out the truth. Ten the flock destined for slaughter is a genuine commission laid upon Zechariah to be acted out before his people. And it would receive a negative reception. So much so, he could make the prediction that in the future, somebody say in the future. In the future. In like manner, the nation of Israel would make that same fatal mistake in rejecting Jesus Christ as their 
king. How many know this morning that sometimes folks can be hard headed? Yes, sir. How many know folks can be pig headed sometimes? Yes, can I go there this morning? Tend the sheep, which means take care of the sheep. Feed the sheep. Yes, sir. This is what a good shepherd will do. Lead the sheep. Yes. A good shepherd will nurse the sheep. Yes, sir. Matter of fact, David was a shepherd, and he talked about the chief shepherd. Yes. Can I go there? Yes. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, yes. and I what? Shall not want. Can I go there this morning? Yes. Well, in Zechariah chapter 11 and verses 5 and 6, the Bible says, their buyers slaughter them and go unpunished. Those who sell them say, praise the Lord, I am rich. Their own shepherds do not spare them. Mm. For I will no longer have pity on the people. Can I say that again? For I will no longer have pity on the people of the land, declares the Lord. Can I go there? I will hand everyone over to his neighbor and his king. Can I go there? They will oppress the land, and I will not rescue them from their hands. This was just a sad situation. Yes. They were as sheep bought and sold unfeelingly in the market. This scripture represents all the cruel treatment they have felt by foreign oppressive nations that have oppressed them because they rejected Jesus Christ as their king. Can I go there this morning? Their own shepherds had no pity on them. Their own unprincipled leaders, the Pharisee and the Sadducees and, and the Herodians had no pity on them. How many know it's bad when your leaders don't have pity on you? Am I right about it? One scholar said the buyers and the sellers of the people are their own unprincipled leaders and teachers. The greed of the Pharisee was so great and they had the hypocrisy to thank God for their illegal wealth. And because they were not punished, they thought it was okay. Can I go there this morning? Buyers and sailors meant Jews being persecuted by other Jews. But all of this exploitation of their own brethren would reach its height when they rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah. God knew what they would do in the future. How many know that God knows your future? How many know God knows what you're thinking about right now? Can I go there this morning? The Lord says he will no longer pity the inhabitants of the land. Infinitely worse is when the Lord says he will no longer have compassion on them. That means you are in not a little trouble, but you are in big trouble. Can I go there this morning? Okay. The Lord is saying, Dr. Jackson, I myself will deliver the men each into the power of the neighbor yes. and into the power of their king. Yes. And they shall beat the land into pieces and I will not rescue them out from this. Can I go there this morning? How many know you are in trouble when God leaves you alone? <laughs> Can I go there this morning? That is not all, but, but the Lord says he in going, he, he's not going to deliver them and he's going to let them have internal strife and constant 
inner confusion amongst themselves and a whole lot of factions from within where there be a lot of strife from within and there be lots of different groups rising up who can't get along with each other you are in trouble when, when you're fighting on the outside and got to fight on the inside too how many of you know this morning help me Holy Ghost that when, we, when you reject Jesus Christ in your life your life is going to be miserable how many of you know it's going to be full of confusion and that's true individually and that's true as a nation how many of y'all know this morning this nation got a whole lot of problems if you don't know there that after service let me know where you live The Lord says, I will deliver the men each into the hands of the king, yes. which meant in this case to the Roman emperor. If you don't want to receive Christ, then I'll turn you over to the hands of the Romans. Can I go there this morning? John chapter 19 and verse number 15. The Bible says, but they shouted, take him away. Come on, somebody. Jeff, they said, take him away. Crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. They said, we have no king but Caesar. The chief priest answered, oh, Dr. Jackson, you right. You got to watch what you say. How many know life or death is in the power of the tongue? I need your help this morning. I need you to tell about five neighbors, watch what, watch what you say. Can I back it up this morning? Matthew chapter 27 and verse 25, the, the Bible says, all the people answered, let his blood be on us and on our children. Take neighbor, neighbor, watch what you say. That did it. God says, you want the Romans? <laughs> I'll give you the Romans. And the Romans came in and they beat that land. And they hammered that land. And they sm smoked that land. And they crushed that land. Now I need you to pull your pins out right here. What the Romans did is they destroyed Israel as a nation. They wanted Caesar. God gave them Caesar. Tell your neighbor, watch what you asked for. Yeah, they came in there and they destroyed them as a nation in AD 70. Somebody say AD 70. It wasn't until May 14th 1948 that Israel came back Dr. Taylor as a nation can I say that again that was a long time, long time. they were destroyed AD 70 but they came back again as a nation May 14th 1948 oh Zaniah that'll be in your history books Tour, that's in your history books. Can I go there this morning? Yes. Two chilling words that you would never want to hear. You don't want to ever hear God say, I'm no longer going to have pity on you. Watch out. Can I go there this morning? You don't ever want to hear God say, I won't deliver you. Oh, no. I'm going to hold back my power. Yeah. And that's in Dr. Dr. Jackson, he's saying, you're on your own. You don't ever want God to tell you you're on your own. Can I go there this morning? I don't know about you, but I, I need the Lord. I don't know about you, but I need him every day. So Jackson, I need him every hour. How many of y'all need him every day? Now, that's about two of y'all, amen. Can I go there this morning? When Titus, the Roman conqueror, entered Jerusalem, he marveled at the strength of the city and its towers, which the Jews in a panic abandoned and they left.
when he beheld their solid strength and the greatness of each rock and how accurately they were fitted together and how great were their length and how great were their breadth and how great were their width. Titus said, quote, by the help of God, we have warred. And it was God who brought down the Jews from those bulkworks. For what avails the hands of man are his engines against such great towers? He realized that it wasn't he that did it, it was God that did it. It was God that gave him the victory. Can I go to this morning? How many know this morning that history is in God's hand? To your neighbor, neighbor, oh neighbor. History is in God's hand. Can I back it up this morning? Zechariah chapter 11, verse 7, the, the Bible says, So I pastored the flock, marked for slaughter, particularly the oppressed of the flock. Then I took two staffs. I called one favor. Somebody shout favor. And the other union. Somebody shout union. And I pastored the flock. Christ knew ahead of time what the results of his ministry was going to be yeah. to his own nation. Yes, but he ministered anyhow. Christ faithfully took on himself the ministry of a shepherd. Yeah. Twice in verse 7 he says, I fed the flock of God. Yeah. And if you want to know what it means to feed the flock of God, it means give them the word of God. Can I go over this boat? Can I back it up this boat? Oh, he had compassion on them. Somebody said, Good shepherd. Can I back it up this morning? Matthew chapter 9 and verse 36. The, the Bible says, When he saw the crowd, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. How many know this morning that sheep need a shepherd? Can I, can I go there this morning? Tell your neighbor, you can't shepherd yourself. <laughs> can I go there this morning? When the Messiah fed the flock, Christ was actually feeding the poor and feeding the humble, feeding the needy. Can I back it up this morning? Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse number 12, the, the Bible says, But I will leave within you the meek and humble who trust in the name of the Lord. The shepherd carried two staves with him, one very heavy one to beat off the wild animals, and then another light one that he used to help the sheep out when the sheep got caught in difficult places. So if a sheep got caught hanging over a cliff, he could reach down with that, that crook and, and, that, and that staff and, and put it around and, and bring it back to safety. Yes, sir. How many know that David said, thy rod and thy staff? Come on, somebody. Yes, they comfort me. Yes, you, you, you need two types of staff. One to beat off the wolf yes, and one to help the sheep. On, Can I go to this morning? Yes, uh, the, the first staff showed that God was going to have mercy on Israel and not destroy them. And the second staff showed that brotherly ties within the nation would be established. Yes. The Bible says the ministry of the good shepherd, somebody say good shepherd, good shepherd. is in behalf of the poor of the flock and, 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 and the afflicted of the flock and, and the wretched of the flock and, and the hurting of the flock and, and especially those who are believing and trusting God. Well, this passage refers to the common folks. The common folks, they accepted Jesus. Can I go there this morning? Uh, can I go there this morning? Mark chapter 12 and verse 37. The, the Bible says David himself calls him Lord. Somebody say Lord. Lord. How then can he be his son? The Lord's 
crowd listened to him with delight. Somebody said delight. Uh, the humble folks, they accepted Jesus. Can I go there? Because uh, they recognized Jesus is the good shepherd. How many know Jesus is a good shepherd? Yes. Can I back it up this morning? John chapter 10 and verse number 14, the, the Bible says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Do y'all know Jesus this morning? But more important, does he know you this morning? Can I go there this morning? Jesus is the good shepherd. Can I back it up? Zechariah chapter 11 and verse number 8. The Bible says, in one month, somebody said one month, I got rid of the three shepherds. The flock detested me, and I grew weary of them. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> Can I go there? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, the humble received Christ. But the religious leaders rejected him, and they influenced the people. How many know that you need to watch who you socialize with? Uh, I don't mean to get off track a little bit, but if you hang around somebody who's in sin all the time, you might pick up their ways. Can I go there this morning? I'll come back in a minute. But if you hang around somebody who's cussing all the time, you fool around, start cussing and don't know it. Am I right about it? You hang around somebody going to the Coco Club. Watch out now. I get on back to my message. Right? <laughs> Y'all start look mad at me, amen. Say so you ain't preaching, you meddling now. <laughs> Can I go there this morning? Yeah. Light, Reverend Pagay, light rejected always brings about greater darkness. I'm going to say it again. Light rejected always brings about greater darkness. I'm going to say it one more time. Light rejected always brings about greater darkness, which means after a while, God will leave you alone and you will develop what we call a reprobate mind. Do you know what a reprobate mind is? Is when the alcoholic tells a drug addict, you need to get your life together. <laughs> it'll sink in, it'll sink in. It is sinking. The alcohol said, I got it together, amen. <laughs> you need to get your life together. You need some counseling, amen. <laughs> Y'all got that, amen. Israel was basically guided by the priests and the king and the prophets, three shepherds. The true shepherd says he's going to remove those three shepherds seeing that the true and good shepherd was, a, was pointed out now, it was time to get rid of the, the hirelings and the false prophets and the false leaders. How many know there's some hirelings out there? Yes, sir. They don't care for the sheep. Can I go there this morning? Some scholars think the three shepherds Zechariah was talking about were the priests, the judges, and the lawyers. But whichever they are, it says, Christ says, I'm going to get rid of them. Can I go there this morning? God is long-suffering. And he waits for sinners to repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. But there comes a time when God has done all that he will do to reach us. This happened to Israel when Jesus was ministering on earth and they rejected him. And then God goes to that place where he says, enough is enough. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, oh neighbor, enough 
is enough. Can I back it up this morning? John chapter 12 and verse number 37, the, the Bible says, even after Jesus had done all these miraculous signs in their presence, they still would not believe in him. How many know this morning, the rest of the, there's some hard-headed folks. There's some Christ-rejecting folks. There's some folks who tell you, I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't care what you say. Am I right about it this morning? Oh, there's some hard hearts in America. There's some folks who act like there's not a judgment day. Can I go there this morning? Matthew chapter 23 and verse 37, the Bible says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gather her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Oh, they, 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 they rejected him. Yes, they did. And, and Zechariah chapter 11 and verses 9 to 11, the Bible says that and said, I will not be your shepherd. Oh, that's, you're in trouble now. Tell you that, you're in trouble now. Come on, you're in big trouble now. When God tells you, I will not be your shepherd, let the dying die and the perishing perish. Let those who are left eat one another's flesh. Yes, Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm going there this morning. Then I took my staff called favor, and what did I do? And I broke it, revoking the covenant I had made with all the nations. Can, can, I, can I go there this morning? Christ broke his, his staff called, called favor. The breaking of the staff called favor or called beauty symbolized Christ's breaking of his covenant with all the other nations. What's going on there? Zechariah is talking about breaking the covenant with all the nations of the earth for a simple reason. God had made a covenant with all the nations of the earth that they could not hurt his people unless he allowed them to. Can I go there this morning? All the nations of the earth were under restraint and they could not harm the people of God. Because of that covenant, they could not do any harm to God's people unless God let them. It was also a covenant of protection. But God broke that staff. God broke that covenant. How many know this morning that you are protected by the blood of Jesus? Yes, Somebody else said, thank God for the blood. Somebody said, thank God for the protection. How many know that God is watching over us? Well, God makes covenant for protection. Can I go there this morning? Ezekiel chapter 34 and verse number 25, the Bible says, I will make a covenant of peace with them and rid the land of wild beasts so that they may live in the desert and sleep in the forest in what? In safety. The Bible says no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Am I right about it? Yes, sir. And when the enemy come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will do what? Yes. Lift up a standard. God makes covenant for the protection of his people that we might live in safety. Can I back it up this morning? Yes. Can I go over this morning? Yes, sir. Is God watching over you this morning? Yes. Is God's angels watching over you? all day and all night, but God makes covenant to protect his people, that we might live in safety. Hosea chapter 2 and verse number 18, the, the Bible says, in that day, someone say, in that day, I will make a covenant 
for them with the beast of the field and the birds of the air and the creatures that move along the ground, bow and sword and battle I will abolish from the land so that all may lie down in what? Safety. Somebody shout safety. Safety. Uh, how many of you are protected by the Lord this morning? Yes. When God is your protector, when God is your provider, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will lift up a standard against him. Can I go there this morning? But God broke the staff. He broke the favor. He broke the beauty. And then he allowed the Romans to come in and destroy the land, destroy the temple, and destroy the city, and destroy the economy, and destroy the people. And then the nation was dissolved. Can I go to this morning? Because the staff was broken. But when the staff was whole, nobody could touch them. Can I break it down this morning? Alexander the Great, Jeff, as great as he was, Dr. Taylor, he could not touch Israel because the staff was not broken. Can I go there this morning? Antiochus Epiphany, as bad as he was, could not destroy the nation because the staff was not broken. Can I go there? Pompey and all his power could not destroy them because the staff was not broken. But when God broke the staff, help me Holy Ghost, Rome came in there in AD 70 and destroyed Israel as a nation. But he couldn't do it till God allowed it. How many of you know your life is in God's hand? How many know your future is in God's hand? Oh, talk about 10 neighbors. Your future is in God's hand. Yeah, about a million and a half Jews got destroyed. Sister Grant, Sister Moses, because that staff was broken. It was the poor of the flock that received the message from the Lord. It is as, as if now the willing heart, they receive the blessings of God. Can y'all go with me this morning? It's the humble heart that receive God's blessing. Can I go there this morning? It's the heart that trembles at God's word that receives his blessings. It's those who fear the Lord that gets the blessings of the Lord. It's those who love the Lord who receive the blessing of the Lord. It's those who hunger after God, who are fed by God. It's those who are thirsty after God, who receive the water and revelation of God. How many of you are thirsty this morning? How many of you are hungry this morning? How many of you want to be blessed this morning? How many of you want to be touched this morning? How many of you want more of God this morning? Come on, somebody shout this morning. More of the Lord this morning. How do you know he can bless you this morning? How do you know he can heal you this morning? Then God says, after he breaks the staff, he says, Zachary, break that staff. And let me know, I'm not going to feed you anymore. I'm not going to protect you anymore. See, sometimes God gets fed up with us. There's things going on in this nation. I pray God forgive us. Of all our sins. He, he, he got fed up in Moses' day. Am I right about it? He said, none of y'all go to the promised land but the young folks. Can I back it up this morning? Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 17, the, the Bible says, on that day, I will become angry with them and forsake them. Can y'all hear me? I will hide my face from them. Can y'all hear me? And they will be destroyed. Can I go there? This is when God gets fed up with you. Many disasters and difficulties will come upon them. Oh, Jonathan, and on that day, they will ask, have not these disasters 
come upon us because our God is not with us. Oh, it's bad when the Lord's not with you. Yes, sir. I don't know what you I don't want to hang around folks who the Lord's not with. Yeah. They, they can't help me out. <laughs> folks who can't talk with the Lord, get a prayer through, what do I want to hang around them for? Yeah. I'm just giving y'all a little advice here. <laughs> don't hang around folks who can't help you out. <laughs> I need somebody to get a prayer through. I don't need nobody in sin. Hey, they can't be my friend, but I can minister to them. <laughs> can I go there this morning? I give y'all some wisdom this morning. God says, that which died, let it die. That would perish, let it perish. I was good shepherd to you, but you rejected me. Can I go there this morning? When that covenant of favor is broken, God says you're going to have death by famine, death by pestilence, death by sword, and death by captivity. And then the most horrible thing of all, the flock of sheep will become a flock of wolves. And it's recorded with Josephus that the war got so bad that not only a, a million folks got killed, a million and a half folks got, got killed, but they resorted to to eating one another. They resort to cannibalism. You know, it's bad to reject Jesus. Can I go to this morning? Yeah. Oh, when, when that staff was broken, Rome now had permission. God allowed them to, to go in there and destroy that nation. Somebody say AD 70. AD 70, the temple was destroyed, and we heard in the beginning the land was set on fire from top to bottom. Jerusalem was burned down, and then the folks were killed, and some were taken to captivity and spread throughout the world. Can I go there this morning? Well, Christ is going to ask, what do you think about my ministry? Can I go there? Zechariah chapter 11. Verses 12 and 13, the Bible says, I told them. Somebody say, I told them. If you think it best, give me my pay. But if not, keep it. So they paid me 30 pieces of silver. Somebody said 30 pieces of silver. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? And the Lord said to me, throw it to the potter. The handsome price at which they priced me. So I took the 30 pieces of silver and threw them into the house of the Lord to the potter. Can I go there this morning? In order to test the people's gratitude for his ministry and for his service, he asked them for his wages to see what they valued his ministry as. Can I go there? What he really wanted from them, he wanted their love. What he really wanted from them, he wanted their obedience. What he really wanted from them was their devotion to God. What he really wanted from them was their devotion to God as their shepherd. It's not a matter of force, but he wanted them to give this to him freely. Free. Israel gave their estimate of his ministry and of his service. They gave him 30 pieces of silver. And that has meaning in the Bible. That means your ministry is worthless. Can I back it up this morning? He, they're saying, in essence, that you're not even worth a gourd slave. Can I, can I give you the scripture on that? Exodus chapter 21 and verse number 32, the Bible says, if the bull gores a male or female slave, the owner must pay what? 30 shekels of silver to the master of the slave and the bull must be stoned. Can I go there this morning? A free man was considered worth twice that much. In other words, 
when he asked the value of his ministry, they insulted him by giving 30 pieces of silver, which means your ministry is worthless. Your service is worthless. And we reject you as our king. We reject you as our savior. You're worth nothing to us. Give us Caesar. Can I go there this morning? Yeah. Zachariah, help me Holy Ghost, is told to cast the money to the potter yeah. in the house of the Lord. Yeah. This is how God feels about their evaluation of his son. The price was so disgraceful that it was given to the potter who busied himself doing things of little value. Casting to the potter was equivalent in that culture to throwing away something that was worthless. Can I go there this morning? Zechariah uses sarcasm, sarcasm. He says the price was a goodly one. Then he cast the price from him as he was commanded by the Lord. Yeah. This passage is also found in Matthew chapter 27 verses 7 through 10 with Judas. Can I go there this morning? Yeah. Oh, it sounds familiar, doesn't it? Matthew chapter 27 verses 7 through 10 the Bible says so they decided to use the money the 30 pieces of silver to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners can I go there this morning that is why it's been called the field of blood to this day come on Holy Ghost then what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled they took what the 30 silver coins the price set on him come on somebody the price set on him by the people of Israel they're saying you're worthless and they used them to buy the potter's field am I right about it as the Lord has commanded can I go there this morning well as, as I get ready to get a little closer here it says then I broke my second staff somebody shout uh oh <laughs> Call union. Can, can I go there, doctor? Yeah. Breaking the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. Yeah. Then the Lord said to me, take again the equipment of a foolish shepherd. Uh, I need your help this morning. First shepherd was the good shepherd. Yeah. Now we're going to look at the foolish shepherd. Tell five neighbors the foolish shepherd. Uh, can I go there this morning? If you don't want the true shepherd, I'll give you the foolish shepherd. Can I go there this morning? If you don't want the good shepherd, I'll give you the worthless shepherd. Can I go there this morning? If you don't want Christ this morning, I'll give you the antichrist this morning. Can I go there this morning? You said the true shepherd was worthless to you, then I'm going to give you the worthless shepherd. Can I back it up this morning? The, the worthless shepherd, the foolish shepherd, the wicked shepherd is nobody but the antichrist himself. Can I go there this morning? Verses 15 through 17 is very important. It tells them how God is going to deal with them in the future because they rejected Jesus as their king. They rejected Jesus as their shepherd. If you don't want this shepherd, I'll give you another shepherd. Can I go there this morning? If you don't want the right shepherd, I'll give you the wrong shepherd. Can I go there this morning? If you don't want the good shepherd, I'll give you the foolish shepherd. Can I back it up this morning? You need to know in the Bible where it talks about the foolish shepherd, the worthless shepherd. Can I make it real plain to you this morning? You need to know where it talks about the Antichrist. How many of you know the Antichrist is in the Bible? Can I back it up this morning? Oh, it's the little horn of Daniel. I got to go there this morning. Daniel chapter 7 
and verses 24 through 26. The Bible says, Daniel chapter 7, verse 24 through 26, the Bible says, the 10 horns are 10 kings who will come from this kingdom. After them, another king will arise, different from the earlier ones. He will subdue three kings. He will speak against the Most High and oppress his saints and try to change the set times and the laws. The saints will be handed over to him for a time, times with an S and half a time. Tell about three neighbors, three and a half years. Yeah. But the court will sit and his power will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. To your neighbor, that's the Antichrist. Uh, he's the desolator of God's people. Can I give you another scripture about him? Daniel chapter 9 and verse 27. The Bible says he will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. Somebody said one seven. And that one seven symbolizes seven years. In the middle of the seven, in the middle of seven, divide two into seven, uh, Zanai and uh, Keturah, you get three and a half. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offerings. And on a wing of the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation. He's going to put a statue of himself to be worshipped until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. Can I go there this morning? Christ talked about the Antichrist. Can I go there this morning? If Christ talked about the Antichrist, shouldn't we talk about him too? If he knew about him, shouldn't we know about him too? Can I go there this morning? Matthew chapter 24 and verse 15. The Bible says, so when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Spoken of through the prophet who? Daniel. Let the readers do what? understand. Well, the Antichrist is going to come in the future. And the Antichrist is going to declare that he's God himself. Can I go to this morning? He is Satan's instrument of wrath against God and God's people. Against the saints of God. And against the Jewish people. Can I go there this morning? Paul said, because they receive not the spirit of truth, for all righteous judge shall send them a spirit of delusion that they should believe a lie. Can I go there this morning? If you won't accept the truth, oh, help me, Holy Ghost, uh, a lie will come. And they're going to believe the lie. Uh, the Lord cannot back it up this morning. Or oh, he's going to declare that he is God himself. Can I back it up? He's going to be want to be worshipped as God. Can I go there this morning? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verses 4 through 8. The Bible says he will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worship. Can I go there? So that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be what? God. Proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things. Come on, somebody. Can I go there? Well, the next, next one, next one, next one. The Bible says, and now you know what is holding him back. Somebody said the Holy Ghost. So that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. But the one 
who now holds it back, which is the Holy Ghost, will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. When the church get raptured out, then all, all hell is going to break loose. Can I bring it up this morning? Somebody say, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Come on, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Am I right about it? That's what's restraining him. Oh, because see, I, 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 I know the Holy Ghost is a good thing. Can I go there? And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroyed by the splendor of his coming. Somebody said, thank God for Jesus. Can I go there this morning? Can I paint the picture this morning? Oh, don't you remember when, when I was with you? He said, I used to tell you these things. Well, the Antichrist is in Daniel chapter 11, verses 36 through 39. Can we go there this morning? The Bible says, the king will do as he pleases. Mm. He will exalt and magnify himself above every God and will say unheard of things against the God of gods. He will be successful until the time of wrath is completed. For what has been determined must take place. Somebody said must take place. He will show no regards for the gods of his father or for the one desired by women. Some think he's going to be a homosexual. Come on, somebody. Nor will he regard any God, but will exalt himself above them all. Can I go there this morning? Instead of them, he will honor a God of fortresses, which means a God of power, a God unknown to his fathers. He will honor with gold and silver, with precious stones and costly gifts. He will attack the mightiest fortresses with the help of a foreign God and will greatly honor those who acknowledge him. He will make them rulers over many people and will distribute the land at a price. Can I go there this morning? Jesus talked about the Antichrist. Can I, can I go there this morning? He said, you'll receive a lie rather than the truth. Can I back it up? They rejected him, but they're going to receive the Antichrist. Can I back it up this morning? John 5 and 43, the, the Bible says, I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. But if someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. Your Bible say that? Yeah. Oh, the wicked shepherd, they're going to accept. The good shepherd, they're going to reject. Can I go there? But God has divine that he's going to punish the wicked. Can I go there? The Antichrist is coming one day, saints. Can I back it up? I'm believing God that the church is going to be raptured out of here. <laughs> Can I go there this morning? Yeah, the Antichrist is in the Bible. He's in the last book of the Bible also. Says McGlover, not only is he throughout Daniel and Jesus Christ, he's in the last book of the Bible. How many of you know what the last book of the Bible is? I heard somebody say Genesis out there. <laughs> it worked every service, every. it? <laughs> it worked every service. <laughs> Can I go there this morning? How many you know the last book is Revelation? Amen. Well, as we get ready to, to bring it in to a, to a close, the last book of the Bible speaks of these things that are yet to come. And we need to know these things. We need to know where these things are in the Bible. It talks about the Antichrist in the Bible and the false prophet that causes the people to worship the Antichrist. And it's put in a symbolic form. And I'm about to read it with you right now. Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 through 18. The Bible says... Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but he wasn't a lamb. But he spoke like a what? Like a dragon, and the dragon is the devil. 
he exercised all the authority of the first beast on his behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. He gonna do something like Jesus Christ. <laughs> Try to be an imitation. How many know the devil is an imitator? And he performed great and miraculous signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of men. Because of the signs, he was given power to do on behalf of the first beast. He deceived the inhabitants of the earth. Can I go to this morning? He ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. Trying to imitate the resurrection. Come on, somebody. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, the devil is an imitator. Now tell three neighbors that the devil is a liar. Ain't no truth in him. Can I go there this morning? But Levera says he was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that it could speak and cause all who refuse to worship the image to be what? To be killed. Tell your neighbor, I don't want to be here then. Tell ten neighbors, I'm going in the rapture. I'm taking my flight in the rapture. Take my flight early. Mm, good God Almighty. He also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand and on his what? On his forehead. Can I go in this morning? So that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. And you know, folks, because all this advancement in computers and because all the world can be brought together through the social media, all this stuff is being put in place that all this stuff might happen. You know, you can take something and use it for innocence and you can flip that script and use it for TV is not bad, but it's what you watch on it. <laughs> the internet is not bad, but it's what you watch on it. And all these things coming to pass is making it easy for a one world government, one world communication, one world selling. I can sell some in this country and sell it in another country. Are y'all hearing me this morning? Yeah. Everything is being put in place. Everything in this Bible is coming to pass. Yeah. I don't have it all together, but I'm reading a lot of little artificial intelligence yes. and, and GPT or whatever that is, but I know what it is later on. But all this stuff is coming together. I used to say, Dr. I said, I said, well, how are you gonna be able to communicate around the world, but that's when I was about 1920. But now, yeah, internet, you can sail around the world, and buy and communicate, but then you can also lock things up. Cyber security. I'm, I'm landing, folks, I'm just putting this in your spirit. So that no one could buy or sell unless he had what? for Mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. This calls for wisdom. If anyone has insight, let him calculate the number of the beast. For it is man's number. The number is that's the mark of the beast. Oh, the 
technology is getting smarter and smarter, or we can get you a little chip and, and put that chip inside of you, and we get all your medical records and everything like that, and we help you out, but what else will you use it for in the future? You think we are stupid? The Bible says, watch the signs of the time. Keep your eyes on the techno technological advancements. Always think about the veil, the good that it can do, but then flip it and say, what evil can be done? Can I give you something very simple? As you drive down the street, you know they have all these, these signs that says, uh, this car has abduct somebody, you know, or there's something on the freeway, you know, or something like this, or this road is closed like that. That's all good. But suppose we're in a different day, whereas you're trying to escape the beast. That's not us, because we raptured out of here. But those who get saved and they're trying to escape, then you can tell them where everybody is and track them all the way. The technology is getting so advanced that all these things in Revelation now can be done. As I get ready to end, wickedness in Scripture is represented as folly, foolishness, foolishness implies moral lack or failure in morality. This foolish shepherd will be real wicked. But because of their rejection of the true shepherd, God says, I will give you the foolish shepherd. The Bible says he will tear to pieces the sheep's hoof looking for every piece of meat he can. Which means that this leader will be so ferocious and so cruel with no love, no care, no heart for the sheep. He will kill the sheep. He neglects every duty of a shepherd. He doesn't visit the sick. He doesn't take care of those who are broken. He doesn't heal those who are, who are bruised. He preys on the sheep, not P-R-A-Y, but P-R-E-Y. His greed and his insatiable lust for power will be his ruling passion. But here's the good news. But in the end, God says he will judge the Antichrist. He says his arm, the organ of power, will be withered away. His right eye, which represents intelligence, will be darkened. God will confuse him. And God will throw him in the lake of fire forever and ever. And later on, Satan will join him too. And God will win in the end. Give God praises. Before I give you the invitation, you may stand on your feet. Let me hear Dr. Jack sing us a little something, then I'll give you the invitation. We will win in the end.
bless me now, my Savior, my Savior. I, I come, Lord. I come, Lord. I come to Thee. Let me extend the invitation. There might be someone out there who wants to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Now is the time to come. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Don't look behind you. Christ wants you to come right now. Receive the good shepherd while you come. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. When you come this morning to receive Christ, Christ wants you. Christ wants to give you a new life. Christ wants to give you favor. Christ wants to bless your life. Come on down. Come on, give God some praises. Amen. You may be seated. This is the oldest. You can help us right there. And then, secondly, there might be someone here who need a church family. And you want to um, join Emmanuel Temple family. God knows we love to have you. Look no further. We love to have you come join on board. Tony, to worship the Lord and to praise the Lord with us and to encourage one another and to pray for you. If you need a church home and a church family, we invite you to come on down right now. Christ, Christ wants you to come. Just come be a part of the, the family of God, trusting him and trusting his holy word. Come be a part of the family of God. Will you come? Will you come this morning? Will you come? Will you come? Then the third one I have, maybe you need prayer this morning. Say, Pastor, I want to touch and agree in prayer. I heard about the good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep, who died for us, who rose, rose for us, who has compassion on us. Maybe you need prayer. I said, Lord, I just need a touch this morning. So I need Jesus just to touch me this morning. If you need prayer this morning, just wave your hand if you need prayer this morning. Need a word of prayer. Is he able this morning? Is he able, God? Is he a good God? Can we trust him this morning? Somebody said, touch me, Lord Jesus. Somebody said, have mercy, Lord Jesus. I don't know about y'all, every now and then, I just, want, I just want the Lord just touch me, amen. Just give me a little more strength, amen. Somebody said a little bit more strength, amen. Somebody said more grace. I dare you say, touch me, Lord Jesus. Oh, touch me, Lord Jesus. Put your hands still in the air, Lord Jesus. They asked for a touch, and I'm asking for a touch this morning. Somebody, one touch from you makes everything all right. We come back to that man and say, speak the word only. Thy servant shall be healed. We come like blind Mark Bartimaeus saying, son of David, have mercy on me. Can you say, have mercy on me, Lord? Can you say, bless me, Lord? Touch me, Lord. Touch my family, Lord. Touch my finances, Lord. Oh, yes, touch my health, Lord. From the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, from arm to arm, heal me, Lord Jesus. Heal me right now, Lord. I believe, Lord. Somebody say, I receive it. In the name of Jesus, I believe. Give God some praises, amen. You may be seated, amen. Oh, we've had a wonderful weekend. You all, wonderful prayer, breakfast, amen, and it's a wonderful time. Dr. Jackson, you keep on playing, amen. Back.
Y'all some blessed folks. Put your hands in the air. Thank you for what we've seen. Thank you for what we heard. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for these good parents, good grandparents, training and teaching and piano lessons and education and just, ooh, Lord God. Ain't nobody but you, Father. Continue to bless them. And, and I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. To give you a future. And to give you a hope. To God be the praises. God be the glory. God be the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. We say Amen. Give God a hand of praise. God bless you all.